Welcome to the Evangelism Podcast. I'm Daniel King and I'm excited about telling people about Jesus. Today I'm with a very special friend. Philip Drummond is a great Canadian evangelist. Welcome to the Evangelism Podcast. Thank you so much, Daniel. It's a real privilege and pleasure to be here. And so right now you're living in Canada. You're from Calgary. Uh, but where are you from originally? I was born in Brazil. And tell me about what type of evangelism you're doing. Well, <laughs> it, it really takes shape in, in so many forms. Uh, I'm invited uh, to go as a, as a pro pro proclamation evangelist. Um, I share the gospel with neighbors and friends. And so basically finding of any way possible to communicate the gospel. And uh, there's a lot of relationship in all of that. And how did you first become interested in evangelism? That's a great question. It was really, um, I think it was mostly through my parents' example, you see. Uh, the gospel was so practical. The church uh, was so practical in the way I was raised. And uh, my mother knew the power of prayer. My father loved scripture and he was a great storyteller. And they were church planters. So we, we saw God saving, transforming lives. Uh, um, and Sunday school also played a huge part because even as I was very young, I wanted to see my neighbors, my cousins, uh, having an experience with Christ, a relationship with the Lord, and so I started inviting them to come to come to Sunday school. I think that was Sunday school was 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 the foundation of it. So, how did you come from Brazil to Canada? Great question. Well, um, there's two elements. I think we've lived in the U.S. prior to that, and uh, my parents also, my father received an invitation to pastor church in Toronto, uh, uh, in uh, Eastern Canada. And uh, so that was those two motivations. I think they wanted to give us as well another shot in North America, but there was this invitation. So early 2001, we moved uh, from Brazil to Toronto. And so you have your own ministry. Mm -hmm. um, you are a Canadian charity. Yes. And so people in Canada can, can give to you. Yes. Uh, and, and we actually have a Canadian ministry as well, uh, King Ministries Canada. And uh, I found the people in Canada are, are very generous towards evangelism. What, what's the name of your ministry? So it's called Last Harvest Evangelistic Association. Uh, our website is uh, uh, lastharvest.ca. And tell me about what you see God doing in the nation of Canada. I know living in Calgary, you have a, a heart for Canada. Um, I always like to say all of Canada for Jesus. Uh, what, what do you see God doing in the, the American neighbor to the north? <laughs> well, you know, I think there's so much changing happening, happening around us in so many levels. Our notion of ministry, I think it's changing. The role of a minister, I think it's changing. The role of the church placed in a particular community, I think it's also being challenged and changing. So, to be honest, I think it's, it's, it's hard for, to, to, to say, well, this is really where things are going. But for me as an evangelist, it's really exciting because, especially after the pandemic, or as we're still kind of going through this, is that, that everything has been put to test. So churchgoers are asking fundamental questions like, what is the church really? What, what is this that I've been part of for the last 10, 15, 20 years? Or what does it really mean to follow Christ? Or what is the gospel message? I, 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 I went through loss. I saw family members uh, dying through, during the pandemic and, and I wasn't ready to go through all of this. So what does it really mean to follow Christ? So these fundamental questions opens this huge door for discipleship for inquiry and people to go desiring to go deeper, to know more. Um, and also with for non-believers, I think there's a there's a greater, let's say, softness and desire to understand more about life, uh, purpose, meaning, why am I, am I in this earth, so to speak. Um, so I am finding amazing opportunities for the gospel. Now you're you're from Canada, but you also travel to other nations. What are some of the things you been seeing God do in other nations? Well, I just came back from uh, the upper belt of Nigeria. And uh, today, I think Nigeria, there's such a systematic uh, massacre, really, of, of Christians in northern Nigeria, especially in the northwest, in Kaduna State. And a lot of the students that I'm working with, and evangelists that I'm working with there, 
um, brings, they bring so many stories of what is going on, the persecution. However, in the same place, you see a church that is so fervent in prayer and so many followers of Christ who are really fervent and sold out to the gospel despite persecution. So that's one thing. Um, another country that I was recently, uh, last March, was Ethiopia. And what I sensed as, as I prayed and prepared to go into Ethiopia in my heart, but also confirmed with local leaders in Ethiopia, is that leaders in Ethiopia are fine. They, they realize that they have a window of opportunity uh, to reach the nation, to plant churches, to mobilize believers, to disciple, to equip, identify evangelists. And there is this huge sense of urgency because they don't know for how long. So these are the most recent uh, places I've been. Now, I'm also leaving in a couple of days uh, in July now to Brazil, which is a nation in Alaska. It's almost like they, we, in Brazil we've, we've had a, a hundred year revival almost, considering the rate of, in which the church is growing. But there seems to be most recently this new fire and passion, especially in the hearts of young people, for missions. And, uh, and they realize now that they have a global voice through social media and content production and all of that. So there's so much to say about Brazil, but those are the three recent nations that I'm in touch with. Years ago, God spoke to me and said, Daniel, the mission field shall become a mission force. Yes. And I think we're seeing that in many different nations around the world, like Brazil, where they are on fire for God. Historically, missionaries went to Brazil, they went to South America, they went to Africa. Uh, but now what we're seeing is that the, the global south is where Christianity is on fire. Yeah. People are excited about serving God. I mean, when you go to a Brazilian church, often they are singing songs, they're dancing, they are, they, they don't just do a 45 minute service, it, the service can go for several hours sometimes, just because people are excited about God. And, and I love that passion and excitement in Brazil, but I, I really like what you said about how they're starting to think about missions in Brazil. And so now God is sending people like you, like your family, uh, other people from Africa and other parts of the world, back to these nations that have historically been mission sending countries. And so when you think about Canada, over the years, Canada has sent missionaries all over the world. They've been a great missionary sending nation. But there's so many people in Canada right now that need Jesus. Yes. There is a need for revival. And so now, uh, and Canada is very welcoming to people coming from other nations. Uh, people who, who want to come, there's, there's work for them to do, there's a way for them to come in. That in many ways, they're way more welcoming even than the United States is. And, and, and people want to immigrate to Canada because there is a good life there. But what I think we're going to see is that, uh, and what I really hope God does, is that people that are on fire for God come to Canada and, and will join hands with the churches that are there to now take Jesus yes. to Canada because absolutely. God loves Canada. Yeah, absolutely. I think, again, I, I think you know, Canada is, is a very different country, government, uh, culture, uh, the, the identity of the church in a certain way is very different from what we see here in the United States. Um, and there is this subculture uh, within the Christian world, I would say, in Canada, where there are, there are miracles happening and so many people coming to Christ within the Persian community, uh, Iranians and African community and Asian community, within the Chinese community, uh, the, the North, uh, North, uh, North Indian community, uh, people from Gujarat or Punjab. Um, and this is really, really amazing. I think what I think for the for the uh, for the, the the main church in Canada, uh, we need to catch up when it comes to working uh, with these ethnic groups, and we have a large number of these people in those communities. So it's very exciting. It's a mission field. Canada is a mission field. So if you're planning to plant a church, if you're an evangelist, if you have a burden to reach the world, you can go to Canada, and in one day you can. You, you can meet with so many cultures and lead so many people to Christ. Yeah, God is bringing the mission field here to us. So tell me about Calgary. Are there people from lots of different countries in Calgary now? 
There is. There, there, there certainly is. I think some people say that Calgary is the most Americanized uh, city um, in, uh, in in Canada. But yes, it's it's a we have the largest mosque, one of the largest mosques in the uh, in in the Western Hemisphere. The, certainly the largest in Canada, in Calgary. You have over five or six gurdwaras, which are the Sikh temples. Um, anyways, in huge Ethiopian community and so on. Um, so there's people from all over the world in Calgary. And the cool thing about the culture in Calgary, it's a very entrepreneurial uh, mentality in that city. So what I'm trying to say is, someone who wants to go and start something, either in the, in, in the marketplace, um, or to plant a church, or a house church movement, um, evangelism. Personally, I think uh, the harvest is ripe, the time is now, the Lord is ready not only in Calgary, but in Canada and throughout the United States. Well, I am so thankful that for the heart that the Canadian people have for the world. I actually met my wife when she was working for a Canadian evangelist. And she, my wife is Canadian. She grew up in Morinville, right outside Edmonton. It's just a little tiny uh, suburb there. And, and so she came from this little tiny Canadian uh, town and from there, she has now traveled around the world. She spent almost 10 years on the mission field. She was two years in India, a year in Nepal, a year in Papua New Guinea, uh, a year in Kenya, and then she started working for this Canadian evangelist. And that's when I met her. And uh, so she, uh, uh, we got married, and we actually got married in Canada, uh, right near uh, Niagara Falls and, and St. Catharines. And uh, now uh, my wife is Canadian. Uh, both of our kids are Canadian, um, and I'm American, but uh, my kids say it's okay, Dad, no one's perfect. So. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, I'm so excited about, about what you're doing, about your family, and also the heart that you have for Canada, for the nation. Not only that, I mean, but you also understand culture. And for me, living in Canada as a Canadian, Brazilian Canadian, meeting you in, in these evangelistic events or as to a, from one evangelist to another evangelist, it brings me so much comfort that I don't have to explain you too much. You get it, you understand the culture. And I think this is one of the great assets uh, that you give is because, again, for those who are for, for perhaps in the US who want to do ministry in Canada, you would know how to navigate those waters. So I thank God for your experience in your life. Let's just take a moment right now to, to pray for the nation of Canada and pray that, that God would do something new and, and that there would be revival in Canada. Would, would you lead us in prayer? Absolutely. Um, you know, just as we're, we're thinking, we're, we're, as you're, you're mentioning prayer, it takes me to the book of Ezekiel where the Lord said, you know, I've looked for a man who would stand in the gap before me on behalf of the people. So I pray that uh, this podcast would reach the minds and hearts of people who are listening, that they would feel a call to Canada. Dear Father, we thank you so much for the power of the gospel, for your presence in, your, in our lives. And Father, that even though we are made of clay, but yet there is so much power in the gospel and you are present and the harvest is ripe. Lord, that you would open our eyes, that you would give us more faith, O oh Father, and that we would come together with greater expectation to work together, but make use of all opportunities we can to proclaim the gospel, to announce the good news of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for the nation of Canada and for the churches and pastors and churchgoers, Christians in Canada. Father, that you would bring revival. We have, Historically, we have never had a nationwide, uh, nationwide revival. So, Father, I pray that you would bring revival. Father, I pray for this young generation who is longing for you, who is longing for purpose. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would give us such a breakthrough in the nation of Canada. And Father, that we would have once again a fire, a passion to reach our own and to reach the globe with the good news of Jesus Christ. Father, our desire is that the name of Jesus would be lifted up, that you would receive all the glory and honor. And Father, for those who are listening right now, that you would stir up their hearts for the nation of Canada, that they would be moved to pray for Canada, to know more about Canada, to visit Canada, and to find ways to collaborate, cooperate, invest 
in the proclamation of the gospel in that nation. Father, we pray and we are thankful in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I say yes and amen to that prayer. Powerful. Well, Philip, uh, Philippe, uh, <laughs> Philip, the evangelist in the Bible, was the only one in the whole Bible who was specifically called an evangelist. So, Philip is a great name for an evangelist. Thank Philip, you. the evangelist. Uh, if someone wants to invite you to come speak at their church in Canada, or they want to support your ministry, or, or maybe from another country, they want sure. to invite you to come and, and, and minister, how can they find out more information about you? Well, perhaps one of the ways is uh, through social media. Uh, my name, Philippe, F-I-L-I-P-E. -I -I -E. uh, my last name, Drummond, D-R-U-M-O-N-D. Um, on Instagram, Philippe uh, underscore Drummond. Um, and you'll find me on Facebook. But again, you can go to our website, uh, lastharvest.ca. Uh, um, or contact uh, Evangelist Daniel, and he will direct you. Awesome. Well, Philippe, thank you so much for being on the Evangelism Podcast. I love what you're doing, and I, I love your heart for, for Canada and for the rest of the world. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you and all your listeners, and I hope to be back again sometime soon. <laughs> we'll hang out in Canada one of these days. Soon. Oh, let's do that. It'll be wonderful in Edmonton or in Calgary. Bless you. Daniel King is on a mission to save one million souls a year, but he can't do it alone. Would you consider sowing a financial seed today? To give, please visit www.kingministries.com.